Now you should probably tell them what it is. That will make more sense. <laughs> right. Today we're going to be assembling and welding a CT Newman tubing bender. Christopher Newman. Christopher Newman. <laughs> So we just fiddled with it until everything kind of sat where it was supposed to. It's pretty basic as far as the two outer plates on either side and then the main beam down the center there. And then this is the pivot point here. We've got everything kind of lined up. We've got a lot of clamps on it to keep it square just to kind of get an idea of what everything's going to be. We'll start tacking everything together and then uh, take it back apart to do the final welding obviously but the instructions are really good it's got a lot of detail and tells you exactly kind of what to do everything's fitting you know very very well all of these little holes he's got cut and then the I guess male and female fitment but you'll just do like a plug weld in all of those and then there's a few spots where he wants you to actually do seam welds for strength like on the actual arm so this lap joint right here on that is going to be this spot here where we've taped off that's no welds go there and then anything in between these two lines where you've got those male hookup points which is going to be where we have this plate here so everything else is going to get stitch weld and then this section here You've got a bolded line on the blueprint, and that's going to be a full weld all the way around this. So what I think we'll do is while we have it all tacked up so it's fitting correctly, we'll uh, just put little tacks here and here, kind of keep everything together, deassemble what we have, and then do our stitch welding. Deassemble it. Huh? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. so. That should be pretty dead center. Check to see if check to see if that bushing is loose. Yeah, I'd say that's back and forth. I would say that's loose enough. Like I said, this is just attacking. I know, but they just said make sure it's free. But I'd say that's free. It moves very e easily. Doesn't really matter on that side right now. That one's moving pretty good too. I think it's all pretty squared up. All right, I messed with my settings, so let's see what this looks like. Do you want a test piece? Do we have a test piece that's like heavy enough? Because I think we only have that really. Damn. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> I think this is the coolest part. Every little piece has a laser part number in it. So it's super easy to identify when you're looking at your blueprints. I think the coolest part is that all the parts have laser part numbers, so everything's super easy to identify when you're like looking at the blueprints. Something that a lot of people don't know when you're coming in to do uh, a heavier project like this is put your ground on the ground. Because then <laughs> it's like double grounded. <laughs> the more you know. The more you know. Just a little attack, keep it in place. I feel like these initial welds don't have to be crazy. They're supposed to kind of keep everything where it's supposed to be. So, you know, this isn't holding it together or nothing. 
Okay, so we got it all kind of tacked together on these two upright pieces. Should be the main to kind of hold it together so we can take it back apart and do the final welding. Um, I initially thought we'd flip it over and do some on the bottom, but I think with what we have, it should keep it where we want it to be. I don't think we should have any issues with that. Just pull. All Two sides are uh, all stitch weld together, and so now we're filling all the uh, tabs and slots to do the uprights. It's still kind of partially as far as the whole assembly, but just making sure that this swings as it goes together. Everything's still lined up. But uh, it's coming along. Well, we kind of skipped some steps, obviously. Uh, Harrison had to uh, get going, so I'm gonna finish it up, but we rushed and got a bunch of stuff tacked. Um, he's a far better welder than I am, so I wanted him to get at least started, and then I can go back and I'll finish these plug welds. There's quite a few of them, and so I, I'll go back and do those, but everything else is pretty much stuck together. And then I have to grind a couple spots uh, back flush again, but pretty much the rest of it's just gonna be filling in all those plugs. So I'm gonna get going on that and then I will show you the uh, next kind of big change. I am not a welder. I'm not very good. Uh, I'm good enough to get this stuck together, but they are not pretty. It's got the casters underneath it, and I've got some grinding to do. Um, these couple sets here in the front need to be removed because there's a little table and a rack for dies um, that get bolted, and so uh, they need to have a flat surface to mate to. Um, and then down here is where the springs and ram attach and obviously the swing arm pivots from up here so i want to assemble it before i paint it but i'm going to do some grinding and uh make it look a little prettier overall i'm really really happy with it i wish he could have finished it for me it would have looked a lot better you can still see where the plugs were i kind of gouged a bit deep but got it all cleaned up and so now i'm going to do the other side I've got this side started with the uh, heavy with the grinder and now I'm going to go back and make it look pretty. But once that's cleaned up, I'll do a couple other spots and then I have to do the uh, 1.9 radius die that it came with. That needs cleaned up too, so I'll show you that when it's done. Okay, so on the tool shelf here, I just had to grind the uh, two plugs behind where this plate goes, so that was easy. Got those two bolts in. And then on this side where the die rack goes, I had to take all those down. And you can definitely tell a difference between the welds I did and the welds he did. Um, mine are uh, shallow in spots and don't look very finished. And his have a very smooth after. Um, but like I said, um, it's fine for what what it is, I guess. Um, I mean, it's strong. It's held together nicely. Um, 
he welded where it counts and then I just kind of went back and did what I could and got it stuck together. So they're strong, just not pretty. Um, he's the welder, not me. I'm going to um, get that die rack bolted on and then I'm going to hang the um, swing arm. I still need to grind the um, die that he sends, that smallest radius one, um, but it's got four plug welds on both sides and so I'm gonna take those down and make it look real nice. Got the uh, plug welds all ground down, looking pretty on this one. So now I'm ready to kind of fit the last few bits. I've got the ram in place, the two return springs are in place, which obviously means the swing arm is in place. Um, it's kind of neat the way he's got these bushings in here. And then, obviously, the bushing holds the swing arm in place. And then to keep the bushings in, he's got these, um, there's like square channels on the back side of the second plate, the inner plate. And then these little Allen head um, screws hold uh, a square-headed uh, nut. And then these standoff pins are like the same uh, protrusion as the bushing. And so those are like just neat little ways of holding that bushing in place. So I thought that was kind of clean, very creative design. Um, but a uh, handy little work table. I've got a few of the pins in there already. And then it's got different locations for um, all the tools you need. But uh, I'm going to throw that die in place and kind of mock it up. I won't be able to test it today because we don't have our uh, kind of power system. Uh, I think we're going to get an electric pump, um, either that or an air over hydraulic one. I don't really want to listen to the air over hydraulic, so it would be nice to have the electric. But, uh, yeah, so I will do one more little clip, I think. I'll get it all set together. This probably isn't the best assembly video. There's a better way of doing this, but um, we were just trying to get it done and thought it'd be fun. Well, overall, very, very happy with this thing. I mean, the way he designed it is awesome uh, as far as, you know, assembling it. It's uh, very easy. You just need some clamps and a welder. But uh, overall, took a little longer than I thought, but that's more my fault than his. Um, you know, I think the instructions suggest like a couple hours, um, but obviously it took me all day. I'm very excited to use it. Like I said, I can't do anything with it right now. Uh, I need to get whatever we're going to use to power it. But uh, just looking at it, I'm very happy. I love that you can wheel it around. I mean, that's a huge bonus over having to bolt it to the ground. Footprint on this is not that big, and then just the actual body of it is rather small um i uh i'll make some good videos once we start actually bending some stuff up hopefully it will be very very soon i just need to decide where i'm going to get my hydraulic power from i'm i'm mostly excited about this super tight radius die that he provides um that's that's going to be really cool there's going to be obviously a learning curve with this but uh, yeah, and then now I need to pick out a notcher. So if anybody has a suggestion on which notcher they like, um, I've been looking at a couple different ones, but can't really decide.